الخلع is when the woman seeks separation from her husband with an agreement that she will pay him back whatever he paid as a dowry in order to release her. Sometimes it happened with an agreement between both of them or sometimes the judge would utilize his right in separating them. So al-khul' will be treated as fasq in this case. And the idda accordingly will be the more right view similar to the idda of divorce. Three periods or three months which I answered you in the last episode and I quoted uh, <coughs> the ayat uh, of Surah Al-Baqarah and the ayat of Surah Al-Talaq as well. I don't have to repeat them. But a major difference between Al-Khul'a and Al-Talaq, Brother Muhammad, is that in the case of Talaq, when the man gives divorce to his wife, whether it is the first or the second time, that he still possesses the right of taking her back into his marriage life without her consent. And in this case, it would not require uh, a new dowry, a new marriage contract, or even the approval of her guardian. She is still his wife. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the beginning of Surah Al-Talaq, لا تخرجوهن من بيوتهن ولا يخرجن إلا أن يأتين بفحشة مبينة She must stay with you in the same house during the idda, after the first and the second talaq. Why? Because it's called reversible, revocable. But in the case of the khula, and once you guys agreed that she will drop your payment or will pay you back whatever you paid her as dowry, it becomes irreversible. It is not up to you. Similarly, if the separation was by the judge's decision, you don't have the right to take her back. But you have the right to be respected during the idda that she cannot accept marriage proposal. And if a woman were to marry during the idda, her marriage would be invalid. Okay? The idda is the right of the former husband because you never know. Maybe she conceived. Even if she says, well, we didn't have a relationship for a while, this is the idda which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala stated. وَالْمُطَلَّقَاتُ يَتَرَبَّصْنَ بِأَنفُسِهِنَّ ثَلَاثَةَ قُرُوءَ We discussed this ayah in the last time. Okay? Barakallahu feekum. Thank you. Uh, Surah Al-Baqarah. يَسْأَلُونَكَ مَاذَا يُنْفِقُونَ قُلِ الْعَفْوُ الْعَفْوُ means what is extra, more than your basic needs. So the ayah contain a couple of questions. يَسْأَلُونَكَ عَنِ الْخَمْرِ وَالْمَيْسْرِ He asks you with regards to drinking and gambling. Then afterward, وَيَسْأَلُونَكَ مَاذَا يُنْفِقُونَ And they ask you, what should they spend? قُلِ الْعَفْوُ الْعَفْوُ is what is more than your basic needs. It's something that which you don't uh, really rely on. Like Allah is not asking you to take your basic necessity and give it to the poor. But here we're talking about what kind of charity? We're talking about the voluntary charity. With regards to the mandatory charity and its explanation and who are eligible to receive it in ayah number 60 of Surah at tawbah this is only when you possess the nisab. And if you possess the nisab, which is, for instance, 85 gram of gold, 595 gram of silver, or what is equivalent to that of cash, investment, stocks, CDs, whatever. So definitely this is extra, more than your needs. Even in the mandatory zakah, Allah is not asking you to pay zakah on your house, on your condo, or your car. If you have two or three, as long as this is for your personal use and for your household use, it's not zakatable. So the word al-afwa is what is extra than your need. 